Huh? Don't worry, let me teach you. All right, so this is basic trigonometry. In this case, we're gonna deal with our basic trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent. So just so you guys know or have an intuitive understanding, sine, cosine, and tangent are functions, meaning they take an input. In this case, your input is an angle, okay? So an angle, and it outputs a ratio of two sides. So for sine, that's the opposite side of the angle, which is A, and over the hypotenuse. So all of these functions are just like that, quite simple. All right, so we already did sine earlier, but it's basically the opposite over the hypotenuse side given an angle theta. So you can kind of remember this by remembering so, okay, so, <laughs> okay. Now for cosine, you take your angle theta and it will output the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side. So you can remember this as ka, and for tangent, it takes in another angle theta and it outputs the opposite over adjacent side. So that's toa. Okay, so sine opposite hypotenuse, cosine adjacent hypotenuse, and tangent, that's opposite adjacent. Just as an exercise, I want us to fill out, okay, given this right triangle over here, I want us to fill out the sine, cosine, and tangent of the angle B. So you see angle B over here. So let's begin. For sine, that's opposite over hypotenuse, right? So what's opposite of angle B? That's just the side B over the hypotenuse is C, okay? Quite easy. For cosine, again, the adjacent to angle B is A. So that's side A over hypotenuse C. And finally, for tangent, we have opposite of the angle B is just B over the adjacent side of angle B, that is A. So hopefully, you kind of get the picture here. So now, when is it actually useful to use trigonometry? So for example, in a basic example over here, Okay, they give us a side and an angle and a missing side. Okay, that's all the information we have. Normally, this would be quite hard, but with our trigonometric functions, this is actually quite easy. So here we are given an angle 42 degrees over here, and we see that its adjacent side is 20, and the hypotenuse is what we're trying to find. So given that we have the adjacent and we're trying to find hypotenuse, what trigonometric function do you think we can use? I think we can use cosine, right? Cosine. Because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's do cosine of 42 degrees is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And now we just do basic algebra. So we multiply both sides by x. So that's x cosine 42 degrees is equal to 20. And then we divide both sides by cosine 42. So that's x is equal to 20 over cosine 42 degrees. So your x would simply be 26.91. And just to solidify understanding, let's try another example. So here we have um, an angle, 60 degrees, an opposite side, which is uh, 22, and we're trying to find the adjacent side. So hypotenuse here is not important. And so if we recall our Sokotoa, which trigonometric function um, kind of disregards the hypotenuse. So that's tangent, right? So tangent of our angle, 60 degrees, okay, is equal to the opposite side, so that's 22, over the adjacent side, that's x. So we do the same process as earlier, where we do x, okay, tangent 60 degrees is equal to 22, and then you divide both sides by tangent 60, so 22 over tangent 60. And so all you get is 12.702. Now it's interesting because we can actually do another process where we find the angle given two sides. Okay, So for example, here we have an unknown angle, x degrees, and we have two sides, 22 as its opposite, and then as its hypotenuse, we have 44. So we can use sine here, right? So it's sine of x degrees is equal to okay, opposite side, that's 22, over the hypotenuse. So when you see a sine like this, what do you do algebraically? Well, in order to isolate our x, we can actually do the inverse sine function 
for both sides. So what do I mean by this? Okay, we put x degrees over here is equal to okay the sine inverse. Okay, that's the sine inverse of twenty two over forty four. Now you just put this into a calculator and it will easily give you that x is equal to thirty degrees. And so that's an overview of the three basic trigonometric functions. Hopefully you understand and thanks so much for watching. Just so that you don't think that trigonometry is useless, I'm going to try to flash some applications that we use in trigonometry, especially when it comes to the real world. Thanks again for watching.